Number 10. Destroyer Number 356 Built in 1984, Destroyer Number 356 was a Russian-built frigate or warship that was given to the Cubans. But the Cuban government had no use for the 330-foot-long vessel and sold it to the Cayman Islands during the mid-90s. It was renamed the MV Captain Keith Tibbets, or Captain Keith, and it was deliberately sunk off the island of Cayman Brac as an artificial reef. Famed diver and wreck explorer Jean-Michel Cousteau was there for the sinking of the vessel and the filming of a documentary about it called Destroyer at Peace. The film reveals the cleaning and preparation process that the ship underwent before it was submerged at its final resting place beneath the waves. Since then, Destroyer No. 356 has become one of the most popular diving sites in the Cayman Islands. Many Americans view the sunken ship as a symbol of capitalism's ultimate triumph over the Soviet Union. It sits on its side between two coral reefs near the island's north shore, where it's become home to numerous fish species including groupers, barracudas, turtles, and angelfish. Number 9. American Star The SS American Star was built in 1940 with plans to operate as a luxury cruise ship. Instead, it transported U.S. troops overseas during World War II. The ship was also camouflaged and used to evacuate 483,000 soldiers throughout the conflict. After the war, it was converted into a luxury cruise ship as it was originally intended. The American Star embarked on its maiden voyage as a cruise vessel in 1946 when it traveled from New York City to Southampton, England. From there, the ship changed hands numerous times, underwent several renovations, and operated under many different names. But time took its toll on the American Star, as it does on all maritime vessels. In 1993, a Thai company bought the ship for $2 million after it went 16 years without maintenance. By then, its engines were unusable, but the new owner didn't have much use for them anyway, since the plan was to turn the vessel into a luxury hotel. Things nevertheless went horribly awry in early 1994 while the ship was being towed to its new home. The American Star encountered a tough storm off the Canary Islands, and the tugboat that was pulling it lost control of the vessel. A few days later, it ran aground and broke in two near the island of Fuerteventura. The ship was declared a total loss and left behind. Soon enough, looters had stripped it of its valuables. For 13 years, the front half of the vessel sat partially submerged near the beach. It sank beneath the waves in 2007. Number 8. Giannis D. Originally named the Shoyo Maru, the Giannis D was built in Japan in 1969. While traveling full speed ahead from Croatia to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia with a load of timber in 1983, the ship crashed into a treacherous reef in the Suez Canal known as Shab Abu Nuhas which sits at the edge of an extremely busy shipping lane. Despite being well known and present on most maps, the reef is difficult to spot, especially in the harsh sunlight. And it often goes unnoticed until it's too late, which is exactly what happened with the Giannis D. Today, the ship sits in three pieces on the northern end of the reef. Divers can go inside certain parts of the wreck, including the engine room, mess hall, and bridge. Because the vessel is tilted, it can be very disorienting and is therefore only open to advanced divers. Number 7. The Bismarck Built during the late 1930s, the German battleship Bismarck was Europe's most formidable warship for a very brief period. Yet, it sank just eight days after it hit the seas. The vessel's maiden voyage was a mission to intercept Allied cargo ships that were carrying supplies to Britain. During the first few days of the trip, the Bismarck sank the legendary English flagship the HMS Hood, but the victory came at a huge cost. The English were furious and retaliated against the Nazis with full force by sending the British Navy after the Bismarck. An all-out battle ensued and ended with a British victory. The Bismarck sank to the ocean floor and remained missing until 1989 when famous oceanographer and explorer Robert Ballard rediscovered the wreck. Based on the warship's pristine condition, it was clear that it was incredibly well built. The swastikas that had been painted on its exterior shortly after its construction were still visible. What's even more surprising is that the vessel was intact even after landing on an extinct underwater volcano and tumbling two-thirds of the way down the 3,300-foot slope. The Bismarck's hull was still in one piece, indicating that it was flooded completely before it sank. If it hadn't been, it would have imploded under the pressure of the surrounding water once it plunged below the waves. Number 6. MV Rosie Built in Bristol, England in 1958, the tugboat MV Rosie originally went by the name Rossmore. In 1969, she was sold to new owners who changed her name to Rosgarth. The vessel continued to operate out of Liverpool until it was relocated to Malta in 1972. Rosie spent the rest of her career sailing out of the Porta Valleta. Also known as Grand Harbor, it's one of Malta's natural harbors. 
The tugboat received her current name in 1981 when she was sold to the company Malta Tug. She continued to work for many more years until she was decommissioned and sold to Captain Morgan Cruises. Even after her days as a tugboat were over, the vessel remained useful. In September 1992, its new owners scuttled it off Malta's northernmost harbor, Sirkiwa, as a diving attraction and an artificial reef. It was part of the company's underwater safari tours, which no longer operate, but it still remains popular among divers to this day. Hundreds of visitors travel to the site every year to catch a glimpse of the rusting vessel. Number 5. Karlsruhe when the Nazis invaded Norway in April 1940 through the port city of Kristiansand to aid in their conquest, the Germans used a repurposed ship that was built during the 1920s. Known as the Karlsruhe, the 571-foot-long swastika-bearing vessel was struck by a British submarine torpedo shortly into its return journey. The crew evacuated and the Nazis deliberately sank the ship 15 miles off the Norwegian coast, where it came to rest 1,607 feet below the water's surface. The Karlsruhe is detailed in historical accounts, but the wreck's whereabouts were a mystery for around 80 years, according to maritime archaeologist Frölk Valoa. It was finally rediscovered last year by the Norwegian power grid operators with the help of an expert, who identified the submarine in images and sonar scans. Spotted during a routine inspection, the sunken vessel was found just 50 feet from a subsea power cable that the company has been operating since 1977. The Karlsruhe was the last large missing World War II era vessel belonging to the Germans. It may contain thousands of liters of oil and other hazardous materials, which experts have warned could lead to an ecological disaster in the event of an attempted salvage. In other words, it would be extremely dangerous to even try raising the wreck. Although most of the Karlsruhe crew was evacuated before it sank, it's unclear whether the wreck will ultimately be classified as an underwater grave. What do you think should be done with wrecks like these? Should cleanup attempts be made, or is the risk of disaster too great? Share your opinions in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Number 4. Hilma Hooker The crew of the Dutch-built freighter Hilma Hooker had no idea they were being watched by law enforcement back in 1984 when the vessel ran into engine problems in the Caribbean Sea. Unaware of the problems they were about to encounter, they had the ship towed to the port city of Kralendijk on the island of Bonaire. The captain failed to furnish all the proper registration documents, prompting the authorities to search the Hilma Hooker. They found 25,000 pounds of marijuana hidden in a false bulkhead and detained the suspects. But the vessel's owner was never identified, perhaps because they knew that there might be trouble and were smart enough not to come forward. In the meantime, the ship deteriorated as it sat neglected as evidence and it began taking on water. By then, the authorities had grown sick and tired of continuously pumping water out of it and they were worried that it would sink and disrupt maritime traffic near the city's main dock. They towed the Hilma Hooker elsewhere and within days it began to list. Shortly after that, the 236-foot-long vessel rolled onto its side and sank to the sea floor. Today, it sits 95 feet underwater on a sand flat between two coral reefs. The Hilma Hooker is one of the most popular Caribbean dive sites due to the water's crystal clear visibility, although most of the wreck's interior is off limits. Number 3. Patrol Boat P-29 Built in East Germany in 1970, the Condor 1-class minesweeper that eventually became known as Patrol Boat P-29 originally sailed under the name Boltenhagen. It served under the East German naval force known as the Volksmarine, which was disbanded in 1990 when Germany reunified. But the Botenhagen found new life serving under the German Federal Coast Guard until 1996. In 1997, the 171 foot long vessel was sold to Malta and renamed P 29. It was used as a patrol boat until it was decommissioned in 2004. The Malta Tourism Authority bought the boat the following year. In 2007, the agency scuttled it off the port city of Sirkua as a diving attraction and an artificial reef. The wreck sits roughly 115 feet beneath the waves but is just 39 feet deep at its highest point. Since patrol boat P-29 was submerged relatively recently, it has yet to attract the variety of marine life that can be seen at Malta's other iconic wrecks, like the MV Rosie. But it is home to a growing array of creatures including sea anemones, squid, rays, and a fish species known as flying grenards. Number 2. Jenny Lind While traveling from Melbourne to Singapore in 1850, a small sailing ship called the Jenny Lind ran aground on a coral reef in the South Pacific. All 28 passengers aboard, including three children, thankfully survived. But their journey to safety was just getting started. They spent the next 37 days living on a cay of sand while building a makeshift vessel from the wrecked ship. The group then made the harrowing 370-mile trip to Moreton Bay near the Australian mainland. A maritime survey that was performed in 1987 found that the wreck was still visible, but archaeologists concluded in 2017 that what was left of the ship had been destroyed by the ocean and literally nothing remained. 
During the expedition, the team found the remains of four other sunken vessels, including cannons, anchors, and ballast stones. They believe that the ships all sank sometime before 1850, which was around the same time that the reef first appeared on navigational charts. Located along a major trade route between Australian and several French and Dutch colonies in the Pacific, the reef was reportedly strewn with wrecks as early as 1857, according to historical records. The region is also notorious for the powerful tidal currents that are known to ravage what's left of wrecked vessels. Additionally, archaeologist James Hunter explains that the reef is dangerous because it's easy not to notice at high tide. In fact, some ships have sailed right into it at full speed. Taking all this into consideration, the Jenny Lynn sinking and disappearance aren't too surprising. Researchers hope to identify the recently discovered wrecks that they investigated during the 2017 expedition, which could help them learn more about the trading history of the area's early European colonies. Number 1. Abia Launched from Irving, New York in 1847, the wooden schooner Abia spent its short-lived career carrying wood and grain across the Great Lakes. It was sailing from Wisconsin to Chicago in 1855 when it was hit by a sudden gust of violent wind and capsized. Waves overtook the boat while it was being towed upside down, and it sank less than 15 miles off the city of Sheboygan. The wreck was rediscovered in 2019 at the bottom of Lake Michigan, where it sits 220 feet beneath the water's surface. It was found mostly intact, according to the Wisconsin Historical Society, which announced last year that the Abia was added to the State Register of Historic Places. The agency has also noted that the wreck has given researchers a valuable opportunity to learn about the early construction of wooden schooners on the Great Lakes. As a designated historic site, the wreck is protected by law. It's illegal for divers to remove, destroy, or otherwise interfere with the ship and its artifacts. Thankfully, due to its depth, it's unlikely that the wreck will receive many unwelcome visitors. The Great Lakes are notorious for their ferocious waters, which have taken down thousands of ships over the centuries. Every year, a dangerous weather pattern called the Gales of November causes massive storms that come with 50 mile per hour winds and gusts of up to 100 miles per hour, creating the perfect conditions for sinking a ship. And that's precisely what happened to the Abia. There are many more wrecks waiting to be discovered in the Great Lakes and which will probably be found in remarkably intact condition owing to the dark, frigid conditions of their watery graves. Have you ever thought about shipwrecks that can be found in lakes rather than the ocean? Ever done a shipwreck dive yourself? Tell us about it in the comments. Number 10. Soyuz Rocket Russia's newest launching site for spacecraft is located several hundred miles inland from the Pacific coast in the country's Far East region. This is where Soyuz rockets blast off into space, dropping their stages on the remote Yakusha region below as they travel away from the Earth. Each rocket sheds its four boosters, which represent the first stage, two minutes after takeoff. The second stage, known as Block A, comes next. Yakusha is sparsely populated, meaning that the chance of a rocket component falling on a person or their home or vehicle is minimal. But the damage could be catastrophic and deadly if this happened. In keeping with the idea of better safe than sorry, the Russian government has established designated landing zones for these parts to ensure that they don't descend on residential areas. In late 2020, Dmitry Rogozin, the chief of Russia's space program, tweeted photos of the Block A stage of a Soyuz rocket that had recently launched. In the comments, he made a smart remark wondering if the staff from SpaceX could handle working in conditions as harsh as the Russian scientists encounter in Yakusha, which is known for its extreme frigid climate and year-round freezing conditions. Rogozin further pointed out that the team recovered the discarded parts in minus 52 degree temperatures. Some commenters came to the defense of SpaceX, pointing out that the agency has developed a far better and smarter rocket, thus eliminating the need for employees to recover discarded components in the middle of a freezing nowhere. Number 9. Russian Woodpecker Radar From 1976 to 1989, shortwave radios around the world picked up a bizarre, unexplained noise. It was generated by a strong signal and sounded like repetitive tapping, earning it the nickname of the woodpecker. But for a long time, nobody knew what the sound was or where it was coming from. The general consensus among experts was that the source was an over-the-horizon radar system. Their suspicions were confirmed after the Soviet Union fell when the world learned about the existence of two massive 50-story antennas located in the Russian wilderness. Known as the Duga radar, it was part of a warning system that was designed to detect incoming missiles. One of the antennas, dubbed Duga-1, was in Chernobyl, the other, Duga-2, was in Siberia, and it was positioned toward the Pacific Ocean so it could detect enemy missiles coming from the direction of the American West Coast. Unlike conventional radar, which can typically only see as far as the horizon, these impressive devices saw over the horizon by bouncing signals off the ionosphere. 
They were capable of doing this thanks to their extremely strong transmitters. The system was designed to detect a missile within two or three minutes of one being launched. Its signal was so strong that it interfered with flight, shipping, and civilian communications, as well as TV broadcasts. But without knowing the source of the irritating noise, nobody could resolve the thousands of complaints that came pouring in to authorities. NATO traced the signal to the Soviet Union, pointing numerous countries in the proper direction for voicing their frustrations. But the USSR denied having anything to do with the sound, and the antenna sites were disguised as children's camps on maps. Russian officials finally admitted that the country was responsible for the signal after the Soviet Union fell in the early 90s. While that solves one major mystery, there are many lingering questions surrounding the Duga radar. It's possible that Western authorities may never know the exact details of the program or how it worked. The system is no longer in use, but the woodpeckers remain standing as rusting testaments to the links that governments went to to protect their countries at the height of the Cold War. Number 8. A Cave Full of Bones Over a decade ago, scientists discovered an underground cave filled with remarkably preserved human and animal bones in the Saudi Arabian desert. They called the site Umm Jirsan. This is where a group of striped hyenas came around 7,000 years ago to feast on their food. Hyenas are known for being bone collectors and for their tendency to voraciously consume what they scavenge, including sometimes the creature's skeleton. The cache of bones found at Umm Jirsan consisted of at least 14 species, including camels, donkeys, goats, and horses, as well as fragments of at least two human skulls. Hyena bones were also found, indicating that the species sometimes resorts to cannibalism. Researchers investigated the site last year and said that the findings are potentially valuable for learning more about what types of animals ancient humans may have raised in the region. They plan to explore similar sites in hopes of finding out more about our ancestors' daily lives. Number 7. Muchalapka In rural Poland near the Czech border, there's a huge concrete ten-sided structure nicknamed Hitler's Stonehenge or Muchalapka. It was built by the Nazis during World War II when the area was part of Germany but researchers aren't really sure what its intended use or purpose actually was. Some speculate that the strange structure was built as a missile launch site. Others believe it could be the unfinished base of a water cooling tower, while more imaginative theories suggest that the construction served as a launching pad for flying saucers or a time travel machine. Some even claim that Hitler didn't die, but that he boarded an acorn-shaped machine at the site and escaped to another dimension as the Allies encroached on Nazi Germany. Beneath the structure, there's a series of underground tunnels that were built between 1943 and 1945 as part of a secret operation called Project Riza. None of the tunnels were ever finished. Do you believe any of these wild theories? Do you have any of your own? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Number 6. Bizarre Monoliths In late 2020, three mysterious monoliths appeared in Utah, California, and Romania over a several-week span. The first sighting happened in the Utah desert in late November. Helicopter crews and wildlife biologists were counting bighorn sheep from overhead when they noticed a conspicuously out-of-place 11-foot-tall stainless steel object with a mirrored surface. Nobody knows who created the monument. Soon after it appeared, four unidentified men were allegedly seen dismantling it and carrying the pieces away. They reportedly told an onlooker that they were disposing of trash. Their association with the sculpture, if any, remains a mystery to this day. Days later, a 13-foot-tall triangular monolith appeared on a hill in the Romanian town of Piatra Neamt. Not long after that, another strange structure measuring 10 feet tall sprang up on Pine Mountain in Atascadero, California. Some speculate that the monuments were inspired by a storyline from the science fiction novel 2001 A Space Odyssey. In the story, a monolith appears on Earth and gives wisdom to a tribe of apes. But a solid real-life explanation for the cryptic structures was never established, leaving us to wonder if it was all a giant hoax or if there's a meaningful story behind them. Officials later determined that the monoliths were created as artwork. It's unknown who's responsible for the structures that appeared in Utah and California, which were created by someone other than the artist who built the sculpture that was found in Romania. Sadly, some of the monoliths attracted throngs of curious visitors to protected areas where the sudden influx of crowds permanently damaged the surrounding environment, according to a joint statement from base jumper Andy Lewis and adventure guide Sylvan Christensen, who filmed themselves dismantling the Utah monument. Oddly, the duo's Instagram post addressing the matter has since been deleted. Number 5. Mummified Sailor's Goodbye Letter in March 2016, a group of fishermen spotted a visibly battered yacht called the Sayo roughly 40 miles off the Philippine coast. It belonged to a 59-year-old sailor named Manfred Fritz Bajarat, who also happened to be missing. Inside the yacht, the fishermen found Bajarat's mummified remains. 
The deceased man, who was last seen seven years earlier in 2009, was slumped over at his desk, next to the boat's radio telephone. Photo albums, clothes, document, and food containers were strewn about the yacht's partially water-filled cabin. No one knows when or why the experienced sailor died. Investigators found no weapons aboard and no evidence that Bajarat had another person on the yacht at any point during his ill-fated voyage. In other words, there was no signs of foul play. Bajarat's remains were well preserved owing to the hot temperatures, salty air, and dry ocean winds. Forensic scientists concluded that he may have become mummified within weeks of dying and that he may have died from a heart attack or a stroke. In addition to the man's body, detectives found a letter Bajarat wrote to his wife Claudia in 2010 aboard the yacht. The couple had broken up in 2008, two years before Claudia passed away from cancer in Martinique. Bajarat wrote the goodbye note following her death. The letter states, 30 years we've been together on the same path, then the power of the demons was stronger than the will to live. You're gone. May your soul find its peace. Your Manfred. Number 4. A Real Desert Oasis In the vast expanse of Egypt's western desert, there's a historic town called Siwa. It has isolation to thank for the preservation of its culture and language. Siwa's 25,000 inhabitants are ethnic Berbers who originated from a nomadic North African tribe. They're also known as Amazigs, and they speak a Berber dialect called Siwi. The town is located 341 miles from Cairo, which is roughly a five-hour bus ride. For centuries, the only contact the oasis had with the so-called outside world was with traders and occasional pilgrims who passed through the region. This limited interaction with outsiders enabled Siwa's residents to retain their unique culture with relative ease. Today, the oasis has become somewhat of a tourist attraction. This paradise in the desert features natural cool springs, a hot spring, leisurely cafes, date palms and olive trees, an eco-lodge made of mud and salt, and an overall inviting atmosphere. Due to its remoteness, Siwa isn't overrun with tourists, making for a truly authentic experience. Number 3. Secret Military Base While using Google Earth last year, a curious internet user noticed what they suspected was a secret military base near the Libyan border in Ur-Rui, Niger. Located in a remote part of the Sahara Desert, the site appears to consist of several buildings and vehicles, a landing strip, a fence marking the property's perimeter, and what looks like several landmines. The person who noticed the site posted an image to Reddit, prompting Lad Bible to investigate. The team found that the property is in fact an active military base. It's not necessarily a secret, but it's safe to assume that it was built in the middle of nowhere to avoid prying eyes. Known as the Aerodrome Madama, the property is a French military base and there are around 100 soldiers from Niger's military stationed there. It was built in 1931 at the site of a former colonial fort. Today it operates as a border post that monitors travel between Niger and Libya. While the Google Maps enthusiast who brought attention to the site mistakenly thought its existence was a secret, they were right about the property being surrounded by landmines and a fence. Number 2. An Isolated Mining Village Nicknamed white gold or saltpeter, potassium nitrate is a chemical compound that was in extremely high demand during the 19th and part of the 20th centuries. Mined from a nitrate-rich layer of desert called caliche, it was used as fertilizer and came in handy when it came to feeding Europe's burgeoning population at the time. Throughout that period, most of the world's saltpeter supply came from the former Chilean mining town of Humberstone in the Atacama Desert. It was one of several dozen mining towns in the country whose economy relied heavily on its saltpeter exports. Founded as La Palma in 1872, Humberstone was home to an estimated 3,500 residents at its peak. It was located extremely far from civilization, including other mining towns, and had very limited contact with the outside world. Chile's saltpeter industry collapsed in the early 20th century due to warfare and the development of other fertilizers. Humberstone was consequently abandoned over a roughly 30-year period, with its final residents leaving in 1961. Its ruins are still there to this day, standing as a testament to the difficult conditions workers endured there and the once booming industry that they served. The site still contains the decaying remains of workers' houses, machinery, warehouses, a theater, a church, and a hotel. Number 1. Ancient Rock Art In late 2020, archaeologists announced the shocking discovery of ancient rock art inside a remote, unmapped cave in Thailand's Sam Roy National Park. Made from a pigment called ochre, the drawings consist of an antelope, a humanoid figure, and a family with interlocking arms. The artwork is estimated to be between 2,000 and 3,000 years old. A team led by archaeologist Kaniga Primjai spent months searching the park, which is located roughly four hours south of Bangkok. Combing through the jungle was no easy task and required the help of a machete-wielding park ranger who cut paths through the dense foliage for the researchers. 
Navigating steep rocky terrain to access the caves was just as challenging as forging a trail through the greenery. The team finally discovered the prehistoric rock art after searching 40 other caves with no luck. A group of hunter-gatherers probably made the drawings while camping in the mountains, according to Noel Hidalgo Tan of Southeast Asia's Regional Center for Archaeology and Fine Arts, who spoke with AFP. And there may be more artwork waiting to be discovered throughout Thailand's caves. But between the country's understaffed Department of Fine Arts and the challenges of trekking through the unexplored terrain, these future discoveries will come infrequently at best. Number 9. Ice Age Mining Camp at the end of the last ice age between 10,000 and 12,000 years ago, indigenous miners risked their lives mining a pigment called red ochre, traveling deep into pitch dark caves on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. These caves were soon filled with water and forgotten about as glaciers melted and sea levels rose. Cave divers explored the fascinating site in 2017 and discovered the well-preserved remnants that the miners left behind, including charcoal from fires that were lit to provide light, stone tools, mining pits, and red ochre pigment. Researchers have long known that the area's first human inhabitants ventured into the now-submerged caves known as Quintana Roo. They found evidence of this in the form of ancient human skeletons. But until recently, nobody knew why these ancient people went into the caves. Even now, researchers are unsure what the miners used red ochre for. High levels of arsenic were detected in the samples found at the site, suggesting that the pigment may have been used as a bug repellent. It could have also been used as an antiseptic or as sunblock. Red ochre likely had ritualistic uses as well, including in rock paintings and human burials. Number 8. Bagan The ancient city of Bagan was founded during the 2nd century in what is now Myanmar's Mandalay region. It functioned as the capital of a little-studied Burmese dynasty called the Pagan Kingdom, which unified the regions that comprise the modern-day country of Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. As the kingdom's capital, Bagan served as a major political, economic, and cultural center that focused on both secular and religious studies. At its peak, it was home to somewhere between 50,000 and 200,000 residents. During the city's heyday, which lasted from the 11th to the 13th centuries, religion dominated the culture. At the time, the surrounding region had as many as 10,000 Buddhist temples, pagodas, and monasteries. Despite being heavily Buddhist, Bagan was known for its unusually high tolerance for other belief systems like Hinduism and animism. This bustling urban center collapsed in 1287 amid repeated Mongol attacks. The invading forces did very little physical damage to Bagan, but they reduced its population to the size of a small town. After the empire's fall, the Mayan Singh Kingdom became Burma's new ruling power. Bagan's temples continued to serve as pilgrimage destinations for quite some time, but the structures eventually fell into disrepair after years of neglect. Many of them were destroyed beyond repair when a major earthquake struck in 1975. The Myanmar government tried to restore some of these buildings during the 1990s, but its efforts were met with widespread criticism from experts, who accused the restorers of failing to consider the original architectural styles. Then in 2016, another earthquake struck, significantly damaging around 400 of the temples. There are around 2,000 remaining structures in and around Bagan, which has become a popular tourist destination and one of Myanmar's only two designated UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Number 7. Ur Ur is an ancient Sumerian city-state that's mentioned in the Bible. It's the place that Abraham left behind when God instructed him to move to Canaan. While many people cast heavy doubt on the Bible's claims, many of the places mentioned in it were real, including Ur. In fact, before it was even mentioned in scripture, the city was a prosperous trading hub. Founded around 3800 BC, or perhaps earlier, in what is now Iraq, this powerful Persian Gulf port city boasted as many as 80,000 residents at its peak. Ur was continuously inhabited until 450 BC, when climate change and land overuse prompted the population to flee northward to more fertile territory. Italian explorer Pietro della Valle discovered Ur's ruins in 1625. He noticed bricks and other artifacts bearing inscriptions while passing through the area. At the time, what's left of the city was mostly buried beneath the sand. In 1922, British archaeologist Sir Leonard Woolley excavated the site and found that Ur is mostly reduced to rubble. Its most visible surviving remnant is a partially restored ziggurat that was unearthed during the 1930s. It was originally built during the 21st century BC and was rebuilt during the 6th century BC under the last Babylonian king, Nabonidus. The shoreline has been transformed by time and the elements. Today, Ur's remains sit much further inland than it did during its heyday when it was a coastal city located near the mouth of the Euphrates River. Archaeologists are studying the ruins to learn more about the culture that built and lived in Ur. 
Unfortunately, their knowledge is limited by what little is available for them to learn from, and there are mysteries surrounding the ancient city that may never be solved. Number 6. Rupkund Rupkund Lake, also known as Skeleton Lake, sits at 16,500 feet above sea level in the Indian Himalayas. Measuring 130 feet across and roughly 10 feet deep, this glacial lake is littered with at least 800 human skeletons, which are visible for one month out of the year when the ice thaws. Other artifacts have also been found at the site, including spearheads, leather slippers, wooden items, and rings. Until recently, the origins of the human remains at Rupkund were a mystery. Reports of the skeletons date as far back as the 9th century, but the bone-filled lake wasn't rediscovered until 1942. Researchers have been baffled by the site ever since. They initially believed that the individuals had died in a single catastrophe that happened at least 1,000 years ago. But a study that came out in 2019 tells an entirely different and much more confusing story. Scientists performed a DNA analysis of 38 of the skeletons, including 23 males and 15 females who died over a roughly 1,000-year span. The findings completely upend the theory that a single tragic event killed everyone. 23 of the individuals whose remains were dumped at the lake between the 7th and 10th centuries were determined to be of South Asian ancestry. The remains of 14 people of Eastern Mediterranean descent and one individual of East Asian ancestry were discarded at Rupkun between the 17th and 20th centuries. Scientists have yet to identify any specific causes of death, but they do not believe that everyone died of the same cause given the lengthy time span of the remains. One major question lingering in everyone's minds is why the people of Eastern Mediterranean descent ended up in the lake. They certainly weren't Hindu pilgrims, which is a possibility for the others who were found at the site. Do you have any theories on how so many people perished at Rupkund Lake? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Number 5. Bangar Fort In 1573, an Indian ruler named Raja Bhagwant Singh built a sprawling fort for his son Madho Singh in what is now the northern state of Rajasthan. Known as Bagar Fort, the site became a flourishing town with as many as 10,000 residents at its peak. It was home to grand temples, marketplaces, and stunning mansions called Havelis. There are several legends to explain why Bangar Fort was ultimately abandoned. According to one story, a Hindu ascetic named Baba Balaknath insisted on having the settlement's tallest home. He promised that the town would be destroyed if someone went against his wishes, which happened when the fort was built and cast a shadow over his dwelling. Baba Balaknath retaliated by cursing the fort. Another tale claims that a practitioner of black magic tried to woo a stunning Bangar princess with a love potion. She rejected him and threw the concoction at a boulder, triggering the massive rock to roll over the magician and crush him. As he lay dying, he cursed the fort and promised that it would become unlivable. Today, Bangar Fort is considered one of India's most haunted properties. Several people have died in tragic accidents there, prompting the Archaeological Survey of India to ban overnight visitors. This was supposedly done for safety reasons, but some people believe that the authorities are trying to keep people out at night because that's when paranormal activity is at its highest. Number 4. Hegra During the 1st century BC, an ancient group of people called the Nabataeans established a bustling international trade hub in what is now northwestern Saudi Arabia. Known as Hegra or Mada in Saleh, the city was built at the foot of a basaltic plateau in the Hejaz Mountains. Its architects took advantage of the landscape by carving intricate structures out of massive boulders. The buildings contain elements of Greek, Roman, and other architectural styles. They resemble the structures at the Nabataean capital of Petra, the kingdom's only city that was larger than Hegra. Before they came to dominate the incense and spice trades throughout much of the Mediterranean and the Middle East, the Nabataeans were desert-dwelling Bedouin nomads. By the 4th century BC, they had become exorbitantly wealthy through trading. They established Petra and Hegra as their commercial headquarters, using their sophisticated knowledge of the landscape to develop a water system that enabled them to survive in the harsh and unforgiving desert climate. A significant portion of Hegra's history was lost after the Romans annexed the Nabataean kingdom in 106 AD. The mysterious civilization left very little behind for today's experts to learn from besides its elegant and grand houses of worship, monumental tombs, and some other structures. In fact, most of what we know about the Nabataeans comes from Greek, Roman, and Egyptian documents. Several high-ranking Nabataean officers and their families were laid to rest at Hegra. Cryptic inscriptions found on some of the city's tombs include intimidating warnings that trespassers will be cursed. But the stories behind most of these burials are unknown, and for some reason, several of the city's buildings were abandoned when they were only partially built. Number 3. Merv Founded during the 6th century BC by the Persian Achaemenid Empire, the ancient city of Merv was built in the Karakum Desert of what is now southern Turkmenistan. 
Its advantageous location among the Silk Road trade routes made it a highly sought-after prize for the Greeks, Arabs, and Turks, who all controlled the city at various points throughout history. Merv peaked under the rule of the Seljuk Turks. By the 13th century, it was the world's largest city with a population of more than 500,000 residents, and it continued to grow. The walled metropolis functioned as an oasis and an administrative and commercial center with sophisticated features boasting canals, gardens, reservoir, bridges, greenery, streets, mosques, libraries, bathhouses, schools, markets, and more. Merv was also a cultural and educational center that attracted poets, astronomers, musicians, physicians, physicists, mathematicians, and other intellectuals and progressive thinkers. In 1221, Genghis Khan's son, Talui Khan, led a Mongol army into the city and laid siege to Merv. The invading forces slaughtered somewhere between 700,000 and a million people, in other words, nearly the entire population. They then set fire to the metropolis, more or less completely destroying it. Several rulers tried to rebuild the city, but they never managed to restore it to its former glory, and the destruction is evident in the ruins that remain at the site today. Number 2. Chalcatzingo Around 1500 BC, an ancient settlement called Chalcatzingo sprang up in Mexico's central highlands. It evolved into a complex culture around 900 BC, which was around the same time that one of Mesoamerica's other oldest known civilizations, known as the Olmecs, established a presence in the region. Elements of the architecture and artistic style found at Chalcatzingo suggest that its inhabitants were Olmec settlers or had close ties with the Olmecs. Images of large-toothed wildcats indicate that residents shared in the Olmec worship of the jaguar. The artwork includes depictions of big cats with beaks and other unnatural features, as well as felines engaging in violent acts. One carving shows a ferocious jaguar disemboweling a human. The settlement was situated along intersecting trade routes that connected the Olmecs with the Mesoamerican societies throughout Mexico. At its peak, Chalcatzingo was home to somewhere between 500 and 1,000 residents who grew maize and other staple crops, nourishing their fields with water from a nearby mountain stream. Chalcatzingo experienced a sudden decline around 500 BC, at roughly the same time as the Olmec civilization collapsed. Researchers believe environmental factors were responsible for the fall of the Olmecs outside Chalcatzingo. While these events didn't directly affect the city, the population there likely suffered a cultural decline and economic hardship resulting from decreased trade with other groups. The Olmecs' origins are unknown, and nobody knows how widespread the culture was. And while the Aztecs called them the Olmecs, we have no idea what they called themselves. Experts know very little about their religion beyond the apparent jaguar worship and evidence indicating that they had some sort of organized belief system and priesthood. Until more discoveries are made, our understanding of this early Mesoamerican society remains incomplete. Number 1. Tulamela The ancient city of Tulamela flourished between the 13th and 17th centuries in what is now Kruger National Park in South Africa. Today, the 22-acre site consists of several stone enclosures that sit on a hill. Residents lived in what anthropologist Lynn Meskel described as a stratified society. She believes that roughly 1,000 elites resided along the top of the hill, while around 2,000 members of the lower classes occupied the lower levels. Although modern researchers call the city Tulamela, nobody knows what its inhabitants called it. A park ranger rediscovered the settlement in 1983, and it was investigated during the 1990s after South Africa's racially divisive apartheid system ended. Porcelain, glass beads, and other artifacts found during excavations were traced to places as far away as China and elsewhere. This reflects Tulamela's far-reaching ties with civilizations in North America, the Middle East, and Asia. Archaeologists also uncovered the burials of what appeared to be a royal couple containing gold necklaces, bangles, beads, and other luxury goods. In addition to working with gold, the prosperous city's residents also crafted bronze, iron, and copper objects. Some of their creations resemble items found at other archaeological sites throughout Africa, including Mapungubwe in modern-day South Africa and Great Zimbabwe. Tulamela was abandoned during the 17th century for unknown reasons. One study found evidence that the city began to dry out in the years leading up to its desertion. Numerous factors likely contributed to its downfall, including civil war and an increased Portuguese colonial presence. But for now, experts admittedly don't have the full picture of exactly what happened to this once thriving settlement. Thanks for watching. Would you like to visit any of these ancient abandoned sites? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.